Are you consuming too much protein? Let's break it down, all right? Because a lot of times people lead us to believe that we need to be consuming these massive amounts of protein, especially if we're dieting and especially if we're training really hard and we're trying to build muscle or we're trying to stay lean. Okay, I have to give some credit where credit's due. I did this video for sixpackabs.com a few weeks ago and it ended up being a huge hit. And I wanted to articulate it in a different way for my subscriber base and for my channel but I'm gonna go down the same path with what I kind of explained there. So what we have to look at, when we are actually consuming protein, what ends up happening within our body? You see, we increase something called our nitrogen balance. You see, all of the nutrients that we consume, proteins, fats, and carbs, they all contain oxygen, hydrogen, and carbon. But protein is the only one that contains nitrogen. Therefore, that makes it very easy to monitor, makes it very easy for us to know when we have too much or too little because it's unique to all other nutrients. So what we have to look at is if we have enough nitrogen in the body, that means we have enough protein in our body to sustain muscle mass and potentially even grow. If we have a negative nitrogen balance, it ends up meaning that we have too little protein and we're gonna start breaking down tissue so that our body can survive. If we have equal levels, it means that our body is in a nice balance where we're not gonna gain or we're not gonna lose and we're just going to maintain. Now, there's ways that you can measure that with nitrogen test strips and all this stuff, but we really don't even need to go down that path. So I wanna debunk some of the common fitness myths, particularly the one that says we need to be consuming at least one gram per pound of body weight when it comes to protein. Well, couldn't be further from the truth. Let's break it down with some research. So the first study that I wanna reference is one that was a four week study. This study took regular people and had them consume 0.61 grams of protein per pound of body weight and another group consumed 1.19 grams per pound of body weight. They had them start working out, they had them take care of their health, and they had them start living that overall lifestyle to try to put on some muscle and burn some fat. Well, what they found was that there was actually no difference in body composition or strength between the two groups. Absolutely no difference for those that barely consumed protein over half a gram per pound of body weight versus those that were consuming an exorbitant amount at 1.19. Right there, that's enough to lead me to believe that that might be the way that we should go. In fact, even the author was being a little bit conservative when he looked at it and said, let's just err on the side of caution and say between 0.75 and 0.8 grams per pound of body weight. But some of you are probably thinking, well, that's only a month. What about longer term? Because eventually, doesn't it take time for the body to start breaking down tissue? Well, time to reference another study. So this study took a look at it a little bit different. This study looked at a slightly different number. They looked at 0.77 grams per pound of body weight versus one gram per pound of body weight in more conditioned athletes over a three month period of time. Well, guess what? No change in body composition, no change in strength, and guess what? not even a hint of a change in hormonal state, meaning they didn't change out their hormones, things didn't start to shift, they weren't even going down the trajectory of losing muscle, only burning some fat later on down the line. So now let's take a look at it, okay? You may be thinking, well, what if I train really, really hard? I'm not a normal fitness person, I'm someone that's really working hard, I'm spending an hour and a half in the gym, six, seven days a week. Well, there's a study for that one too, so let me throw it at you. This study took a look at high performance athletes that were training, looking like a bodybuilder style or strength training style, just that, 90 minutes per day, six days per week. They still found that there was a minimal return of anything over 0.82 grams per pound of body weight. And that's people that are really working hard. So what does this really mean though? I mean, okay, now we know we can consume less protein, but what about when it comes to ketosis? Or what about when it comes to some of these other things? Well, the cool thing is, if you have too much protein, it kicks you out of ketosis anyway. So let's take a look at what you can do now. By being able to reduce your protein, it increases your fat to protein ratio, meaning you're actually better able to function in ketosis and feel better. But what if you're not in ketosis? Well, then it's just good to moderate your protein level just to take care of your health. You see, what ends up happening, if we consume a lot of protein, it's actually really hard on the kidneys, contrary to what the fitness community will tell you. They wanna believe what they wanna believe, but the studies don't lie. There was one British study that took a look at those that consumed an additional amount of protein over baseline. What they did is they took people that were eating right at the cap of what you should eat in the way of protein. And all they did is add five ounces of fish on top of that. Okay, so they said we're gonna add five ounces of fish above what the baseline top level protein is. Well, 
by consuming just that extra five ounces of protein increased their risk of kidney problems by 250%. All right, that's pretty straight up. Now I'm not saying that don't eat a lot of protein, but when we're looking at taking care of our kidneys, there's a big effect. You see, protein's a diuretic, so it can actually cause us to drop some water weight, which can be good, but it also causes our blood volume to shrink down. And when that happens, it ends up making our blood more viscous, which can increase our blood pressure and can end up causing a lot of other issues and be hard on the kidneys. Now, when we look at how the kidneys actually function, they look at something called blood urea nitrogen. Blood urea nitrogen is an indicator of dehydration in the kidneys, but also an indicator of how you might develop kidney stones. I know you might not be thinking about that right now. Maybe you're young, maybe you're just interested in wondering how much protein you should consume, but the reality is there. If you wanna be doing this for a long time, you don't wanna be having the strain on your kidneys. And let me drop another study on you, simply because I'm chuck full of it with this one, because quite frankly, when I really think about it, I get kind of fed up with the fitness industry, forcing it down our throats that we need tons of protein just to feed the supplement company so that you can buy more protein and make all these people fat and happy. Okay, rant over. All right, let's look at this actual study. What this one looked at was a group of athletes. They took three different athletes, all three 150 pounds, very, very athletic endurance-based athletes. And what they did is they gave them different groups of protein amounts. They gave one person 68 grams. They gave another person 123 grams. They gave another person 246 grams. And then they measured their blood urea nitrogen levels. What they found at the end of the study is no surprise. The higher the protein, the higher the levels of blood urea nitrogen, indicating higher levels of dehydration and higher risk for kidney disease and higher risk for kidney stones. There you have it. Point blank, multiple studies that show that excess protein is not the way to go. Save some money, eat smaller amounts of protein, eat organic protein when you can, because you don't need to be buying that cheap Walmart chicken that is not even really chicken. It's alien stuff. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. And if you like these kind of videos that are debunking fitness myths, make sure you let me know. But also go take a look at sixpackabs.com and the Six Pack Abs channel because I'm happy to be bringing a lot of other content in different directions over there. I will see you in the next video.